Welcome to the pages of the Outdoor Journal. You'll join hosts Mike Johnson and Jeff Murray as they trek across North America in search of the finest in outdoor adventures. See nature's beauty and meet the unique folks who made each trip one that won't be forgotten. Corn. Great, great hot. I know, up and down the ice, eh? Wow. God. Here comes Mike, two and one. Oh, look at that. Oh, what a pass. You know, I uh, fished with a couple hockey players this last summer. Is that right? Yeah. Professionals? Yeah, you bet. Steve Payne from the North Stars, Brian Bellows. Oh, yeah? Yeah. And uh, Mark Pallish, New York Rangers. Rangers they they yeah. call him the fishing magician. Oh, <laughs> is that right? Yeah. All these guys, they're crazy. You know, they love to fish. We headed out of the Duluth Superior Harbor on the second day of the Trout and Salmon Derby, Jeff. Well, there's my favorite lift bridge, Mike. How'd the first day go, by the way? Well, everybody got blown off the lake. There were right? six to ten foot rollers that first day, so there weren't many fish entered in the contest. What boat were you running, Mike? Well, that's Steve Johnson's boat, the Hard Times Charter. And uh, also fishing with us was Brian Bellows for the Minnesota North Star. Right the weather wasn't quite as bad as it was the previous day, but I could sure tell it wasn't going to get any better. You know, that's the problem with the western arm of Lake Superior. Those northeasters whip in, you get those rollers, and you're done. That's right, you blow it off the lake. Even though we were on a Coast Guard licensed vessel, we kept a sharp eye on the waves. Okay. You're motor on it, Dad. You're going to get caught out there one of these days. Like, Today. She's a windy one. A windy one. Oh, well. I separate your men from our boys. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right, Tom. Any this kind. Is, this, this, these waves well, are not a, dangerous. You know, there's only another half day of this derby left. I see you had the trolling boards out, Mike. What kind of temperature profile did you have? We had 50 degree water down to about 20 feet where it turned to 46. Let's come on and she'll bust off that clip here. First Lake Superior fish? Have you been on Lake Superior before? Is this your first Lake Superior fish? What's up? Still there? I don't think so. Yeah, yeah shook her off. Let's bring her up and take a look at the lure just to make sure she's okay. Get her off for a minute. She's tugging her for a bit. Yeah, I know. They just they win like this. This is the blue horn you catch. Steve Johnson, our charter captain, did a great job considering the conditions we were in of handling our lines and running the boat at the same time. So where's your hometown, Brian? Ah, uh, St. Catharines, Ontario. It's about 10 miles away from Niagara Falls. You grew up there I mean, all your life? I grew up there all my life. I moved to Kitchener in 15, played junior. And a couple years there and three years there. That's a fishing ever since you kid? I mean, I, well, I went out. I, was a, I used to go out and money. I didn't go out as much as my dad did. Many hours, sure. Well, you got to practice, practice, you know, to get where you've got. Oh, we uh, we already tagged one and hooked one, but we didn't get him in the box. That's a good sign when you don't get your lines on, you get a fish on right away. Right. It's a sign that you may have a halfway decent day. The wind doesn't seem like it's going to bother us too much. It's going to be a little uncomfortable, but uh, huh. it's a great fishery. You got the whole panorama of Duluth right in your backyard. It has wind in the waves. Yeah. There's a shortcaster over there, standing on the shoreline over there, beating us. The shortcasters do well all this term. The warm water's piled up on shore, yeah. They do real well. It's, you've got to have patience with them. Yeah. On the water. But, uh, they often uh, register a 12 to 16 pound salmon. Jeez, you know, very excellent. Quite often. Very good. I asked Brian what he does in the off season besides fishing. In the summertime, I played a rollerblade league oh. on Wednesday nights and a bit of baseball Thursday and uh, between that and some karate lessons, keeps me pretty busy and in shape. You know, Jeff, there's a little added excitement when you're fishing a contest. Brian was real quick at grabbing the rod when the next fish hit. Bring your rod to the right just a little bit. Is that a little stamp? Small one. A little, a little shaker. Yeah. Straighten her out, Hank. Yeah. 
Congratulations. It's not the largest huh? in the trout population, but... It's a start, but there's one, there's more. You betcha. We killed the skunk. We killed the skunk, huh? Got a little scar in it from an old lamprey. Yeah. We killed the skunk, eh? You got her. Oh, you got breakfast. I can always tomorrow. expand that tonight. Yeah, you bet. A couple pounds turns into six pounds. Brian and I ducked in out of the wind. We chatted about fishing, hockey, and a few other things. Did you get a lot of grief from uh, veterans being, uh, you know, 18? I don't think it was a fact of grief, but I did get, uh, you know, tested in some sense. Oh, sure. You know, I remember that. And uh, it wasn't for the fact that they just wanted to give me a hard time. It was more just because they wanted to, you know, prepare me more or less. I remember sure. Gary Sargent, my first training camp. I was I never been a stronger man in my life. Hmm. You know, Gary's a big fisherman and outdoorsman. And, uh, you know, he really walloped me a couple times there. You know, good, clean hits. Just, you know, welcome. welcome to the NHL. <laughs> there you are. But uh, if anything, he was, doing that, it more yeah. to, he was doing it more to help me. And uh, sure. I, my full-time roommate, I was the only guy I had when the first couple of years there was Al McAdoo. Mm -hmm. He's a fantastic man, and he took me along and showed me the ropes and uh, yeah, helped helps. me along. And even this year, my third year, you know, Al, he got traded in the off-season. And uh, if he would have been around, it would have been that much easier. It just helps, you know, it really does. Well, you know, I, I think uh, I, I kind of liked your enthusiasm of... Uh, you know, wanting to just, you know, come up here and fish like Superior. Now you're talking about going to Alaska and all this kind of thing. Yeah, just, you're really looking forward to doing some of these new experiences. Uh, it's just the thing, the things that you couldn't do before, because, uh, you know, you're in junior hockey. For one thing, you're you're always training in the off season, and that. you're always going to hockey schools or working hockey schools, and now you got you're playing 100 games or so in the winter. I don't know if you want to start doing other things. You know, right now, I'll sort of get my school done and uh, I got the Alaska coming up, and I'm going to go to North Dakota, do some walleye fishing there, and uh, mm -hmm. looking forward to it. It's going to be a lot of fun. Oh, you bet. So hopefully you bet. we uh, ever get around to it, pick up some hunt, and oh, sure. get some moose there in Thunder Bay. You betcha. Oh, that'd be a fun trip. We get guided in by uh, Phil Lincoln and then, uh, oh, geez, the moose are just down there. Oh, they average right around 11, 1,200 pounds dressed. They're talking a big animal. That's you know, big game. Big. One of the largest, well, probably the largest in uh, North America, I think. That's going to be pretty tough to carry back. <laughs> yeah, you bet. Well, Brian and I were inside chatting. Brian's dad and Steve Johnson were watching the lines. Before you knew it, Mr. Bellows was hauling one in. How does he feel? Not bad. You know, the wind continued to pick up, and Steve had a battle to try to keep those boards well, hot. going to be, what, 20 foot miles an hour? That's all of that. Are you so, how could you be sleeping in that wind, Mike? Well, you know, you get on a roll. <laughs> There's no better alarm clock than somebody yelling, fish on! Yeah, I've seen a lot of guys wake up to that call. Brian had a pretty good time. He really looks like he's enjoying himself, Mike. I got a good statistic for you, Mike. Guess how many lake trout Lake Superior used to produce in the pre-lamprey era every year? I've got no idea, Jeff. 22 million. Is that right? Yeah. And we're only putting in 2 million in our stocking efforts annually. Is that in the whole Lake Superior That's now? in the whole Lake Superior. So you can imagine what the fishing would be like if the reproduction was 11 times more than what it is. You bet. Right, I see you got another water skier. Yeah. You know, I had a lamprey scar on it. Is that right? Yep. How many do you get on a normal day when you're out there? Well, you know, it's hard to gauge, but it sure seems like you see a lot of scars on fish. But they say that they're in check still, year to year. 
Oh, they gotta watch that, boy. They really gotta watch that. Look at that, we cut that on a, on a barn door hinge. <laughs> what? What do you mean, a barn door hinge? Steve takes door hinges and paints them. They got a great action tool. He makes his own doors? Yeah. Wow. See, there's that scar I was telling you about. Oh, you bet. What are you doing? You're hamming it up all the time. Every time I see you, John. <laughs> I'm just goofing around here. We just had a shaker on, and I'm, you know, I'm just clouding around. Trying to get him in in a hurry, I suppose, huh? We were picking up the lines because it started getting windy, and we had to head off. Is that right? Oh, yeah. She was really starting to rock the boat. You know, that little shaker turned out to be a steelhead that made the board. You're kidding. How could it do that? It looks like a coho to me. Well, it was just a little steelhead. There was only a 0.89 pound steelhead on the board that, that right? day, and we got second place for the better part of the day. Four pound eight ounce steelhead won the contest for the steelhead division. Hmm. Boy, those rough waves. Yeah, little boats are really having a tough time. We decided to head in too. Steve got a call from one of the other charter captains that was farther out in the lake. And he said it was even rougher out there, so that cinched it for us. Why well, that aerial lift bridge is quite a sight, isn't it? Well, when you're stuck out there and you know that you've made it off the lake, you bet it is. We stopped off at the tent, which was the headquarters, of the Lake Superior Steelhead Association sponsored Trout and Salmon Derby. And that little steelhead we got was second place for a while. Oh, come on. <laughs> sure was. You know, it's a great contest. Over 800 to 1,000 people enter their fish each year. And next year they're going to have a catch and release division. Oh, that's great. For fish, so it'll take the emphasis a little bit off of uh, killing big fish. That's a good idea, Mike. There was a nice lake trout there. That was 15 pounds. Joyce Miller from Bayfield caught that fish. I heard she was bouncing the bottom. Is that true? Yeah, bouncing the bottom. Now where are you, Mike? Well, we're fishing right off the Door County Peninsula, which is in Wisconsin on Lake Michigan. Washington Island area, Gills Rock. Oh, yeah, Plum we're, Island. Right, fishing for Chinook salmon. That's Steve Payne from the Minnesota North Stars. He's fishing with us. You see, you had a lot better weather this time. Yeah, much, much better. It was it was a little rough, but not too bad. One of the problems is that most of the fish were active in the early morning and late evening. Boy, that isn't a bad Chinook. Yeah, they, were, they weren't many. There weren't a lot of them, but boy, when we got one, they were nice ones. Did you see an awful lot of uh, eel waves? Yeah, they, the they, got, they got real active towards the evening. They, you'd see them come right up from 100 to 120 feet of water, move up into the shallows. And boy, those fish turned on then. So this is all downrigger fishing then? Primarily, yeah, 60 to 80 feet. That's a nice Chinook. We had a great early morning bite fishing inshore structure, but things slacked off about 10, so we headed out for deeper water. Did you go to lead line, or were you still using the downriggers, Mike? Yeah, we still uh, use downriggers. We stacked the lines from uh, 120, 80, 60, and Rich had a great technique for uh, slipping lines over. Oh, you mean slider rigs, Mike? Yeah, sliding them down the line so you can have two lures per line. Rich Brostrom is a great charter captain. He charters all summer on the western side of Lake Michigan. Algoma, Two Rivers area. Oh yeah, I know that area really well. What a beautiful day, huh? The kind you always dream about. I sure like that Door County area. It is so pretty. Woo-hoo-hoo-hoo! <laughs>
catch it. Okay, now. <laughs> 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 I forgot oh, to Get over, get this one over here. He caught him! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> God, God. Well, if you work, I stay in the back of the boat. Not real big. Is that your dad, Mike? Yeah, sure is. He goes up there two weeks a year. Gee, as a fisheries manager for the DNR, he handle, must handle fish all day, I don't know how many days throughout the year, and he still gets out there and has a kick out of it. That's great. Yeah, he really likes that salmon fishing. This was a dandy fish, too. Largest one that was caught out of Gill's Rock that entire month. Weren't you telling me you lost a, even a bigger one? Yeah, he one right before this he lost it was even larger. Isn't it something how those fish fight so hard that they just about die when they get up to the boat? Yep, they got absolutely nothing left. Look at the size of that thing. <laughs> oh, that's a big chromie. Now where are you going, Mike? Now we're on the South Shore, Wisconsin shoreline of Lake Superior with Mark Pavlich from the New York Rangers. Well, oh, you really skipped around last summer. I just thought it was kind of unique that here we got three professional hockey players, and in the off season they just love to fish. Now what are you doing here, boards, downriggers, or what? Yeah, we're trolling. This is early season, probably May, off the Superior entry. And mm. the fish were right up on top. Mark got one right away. It was a beautiful day, boy. This Laker stayed down quite a while. Boy, is that ever nice weather, Mike. You know, it's hard to believe that in just a couple short hours, the wind kicked up and blew us off the lake. Again? Yeah. Good old Lake Superior. really knew how to handle those fish. Did he beat you to the poles or did you beat him? He's pretty quick. <laughs> I bet he is. Not bad for a first Laker, huh? No. Get him in the cooler. There's the Edwin G. Gott. Got what? We've got a thousand tons of ore it carries. Oh, that's a big one. There's Kenny Kocek, our charter captain, testing the water temperature. You know, he's got a PhD in marine biology, Mike. Yeah, that's right. Who's that Manchurian, Mike? 
Well, that's Doc Roach. Remember him from the Rainy Lake trip? Oh, yeah. He was the athletic trainer at the uh, school where Mark Pavlich went to college. UMD. That's right. It was a short trip, but it sure was fun. The period's going to start here in just a couple minutes, Jeff. Okay. Those guys work almost as hard when they're fishing as they do when they're playing hockey. I know it. Fun group of guys, though, to fish with. Hmm. Oh, here we go. Here we go.